All right, all you moviegoers out there, welcome back to the Indie Radio Arcade. And yeah, if you're wondering, that door is shut and locked, so it can't be opened unless I open it myself. So don't worry about any crazy ghosts or ghouls coming out during this show. But there will be ghosts and ghouls in this 3MR for this week, because the movie we decided to pick would be none other than Nightmare on Elm Street. And I hesitated on it a little bit, but yes, Nightmare on Elm Street, the classic 1984 Wes Craven film that not only has a personal close place in my heart for one of my favorite horror movies of all time, but also, as of next week, folks, we'll be celebrating its 35th anniversary of this said film. That's right, folks, November 9th of 1984 is when this movie came out, and I'm a little a little bit upset at the fact that we didn't review this a week later, but hey, it's connected with the month of horror, so let's get to it. Because the meat and potatoes of this said film is after Rod, who would get falsely accused of her girlfriend's death, would then find Nancy Thompson who would try to find proof of this mysterious killer that would kill people in their dreams that would go by the name of Freddy Krueger. And that's all of the meat and potatoes that I'm going to reveal without revealing the entire movie. And what did I love about this film? Well, besides the fact that, and I've said this a thousand times over, folks, but the fact that not only I was able to see this film at the young tender age of, I guess, around six? Yeah, just about six years old. And the fact that my mom had the actual Freddy Krueger claw, along with the fact that my father actually had one of those giant oversized things you use to prevent pigeons from crapping on your cars. I don't know, I always thought it was cool, but definitely effective against birds that tried to crap on his car, let me tell you. <laughs> but besides all the memorabilia from that said film, the actual things that I really did love about this film is not only the concept of a person that can go inside your dreams and kill you in your dreams yet kill you in real life was something I loved about this film. Not only that, but the extensive amount of gore that was included in this film, which one of the scenes we will reveal and probably one of our favorite scenes of this entire movie, and I know you've seen this on so many different horror movie specials throughout the year, but it has to be when Johnny Depp, who was featured in this film, would get sucked into his bed along with his TV, his sheets, and everything else, only to make a blood smoothie on the ceiling in a, one of the most craziest ways I think I've ever seen in all my life of somebody getting taken out in a horror film. I mean, since the Saw series came out with all their wonderful traps from probably the Spanish Inquisition and beyond, but this was probably the craziest thing I've seen in horror movie history of people getting taken out. And yes, Maestro, that includes all of the Jason films too, which we will cover in the near future, but I digress. And one of the other things that I loved about this film, speaking of the actors, has to be the fact that not only they got Heather Lenderkamp involved in the said film, who would go on to be in several of the other Nightmare on Elm Streets and other horror movies along the way, but you would also have Ronnie Bakley featured in this film, who was a part of the classic movie known as Attack of the Killer Tomatoes which still to this very day, besides Clowns from Outer Space, was one of my favorite films of all time. Well, of the horror variety. And not to mention, and not to put any disrespect on his name and to include him on the reason why I love this series so much, is Robert England. Definitely Robert England, the guy from V, wherever you know him from, I know him from A Nightmare on Elm Street and being probably one of the most profound horror antagonist of all time. Now, a couple of you out there can dispute me on that, but name one person you know that not only can take you out in your dreams, but can make you laugh at certain points. And Maestro sitting over there saying there was nothing funny about that movie, but it was to me, you know, 
seeing a girl actually fly on the ceiling getting slashed and screaming, it's a little funny. You know, saying that out loud makes me seem weird, but it was funny to me when I saw it at that young age. Tells you a lot about me, folks. Tells you a lot. And seeing the fact that we don't know how to review movies along the lines of Siskel and Ebert or any of those other famous reviewers that you know of, we say this. If you want to go watch a classic movie that allows a creature to go into your dreams looking for vengeance against the children of the parents that tried to take him out only to fail and make things even worse, then I recommend you go out there and watch that flick. And I think one of the special Nightmare on Elm Street Collector's Edition actually comes with the Freddy Krueger call. So if you got enough coin in your pocket, go for that one too. And I guess with that said folks, we might as well head back into this music. And when we return, we'll be back with more of the Indie Radio Arcade. Right after a word from our sponsors. So don't run out of quarters just yet folks. And stay tuned. 